The Javelin 100 study is being presented at ASCO 2020 uh, as late breaking abstract number one. Um, it's part of the plenary program um, and um, it's a study uh, in urothelial cancer, bladder cancer. It's for advanced or metastatic disease and patients um, who complete first line chemotherapy are immediately sequenced to receive Evalimab therapy. Uh, it's a randomized phase three study, so it's Evalimab versus best supportive care. Uh, it included 700 patients, uh, and the primary endpoint was overall survival in the ITT in all comers, but also in the PDL1 positive population. But the reason we did the trial um, was because uh, we know that immune therapy, and Evalimab is a PDL1 inhibitor, we know immune therapy is active in urothelial cancer. It's currently widely used in the second line setting, but many patients who get second line therapy um, don't respond to therapy because their life expectancy is short and response rates are modest. Um, but we also know that if you give frontline immune therapy, um, many patients progress uh, and, uh, and it looks like chemotherapy may be best at getting initial control of disease. So the principle of maintenance therapy is get initial control with chemotherapy and then sequence immediately PD, PDL1 therapy, Evalimab therapy. And by that way, you don't then wait for the cancer to come back second line, which may be too late. So I describe it as a sort of a Goldilocks effect, which is you know, not too late, but not right at the beginning as well. So it's the sequence principle. And we've done maintenance trials before. With I've done them with Apatinib. Other people, Petros has done them with um, drugs like Sumisinib, but have not been successful previously. <clears throat> the results of this trial, um, so maintenance Evalimab after four to six cycles of chemotherapy, for those individuals who have stable disease who responded, those individuals who progress on chemotherapy were not included because clearly best supportive care is not necessarily a standard of care for those patients. So those patients with stable disease or who have responded to therapy, um, uh, and we ran, we ran my 700 patients, and the um, ITT hazard ratio was 0 0.69, and the biomarker positive PDL1 hazard ratio for survival was 0 0.56. Uh, it's important to note that a large proportion of patients went on to get second line therapy. So uh, the uh, and that was very much in line with what we've seen before in in, in studies um, and uh, data um, um, uh, data generating retrospective analyses. So large proportion of patients getting second line therapy. The Evalimab was well tolerated, um, with a small proportion of patients um, having to discontinue for toxicity. And so the overall picture um, from uh, from my perspective. Um, with this trial is that uh, we have for the first time now uh, a study which has shown a first line overall survival advantage in advanced urothelial cancer. Um, Evalimab is well tolerated um, and um, an increased proportion of patients compared to second line therapy will be getting it because it comes directly after, um, directly after chemotherapy. Uh, and so that is also attractive. Um, and if you look at other parameters, such as progression-free survival, uh, the hazard ratios are also impressive for that. And if you look across the forest plot analysis at different subsets, you can also see that the drug is working irrespective of type of response to chemotherapy, uh, also um, type of chemotherapy, gem cis versus gem carbo. So um, I think that this is, uh, I think this is uh, a significant uh, change to the way we're going to treat bladder cancer in the future. I think this will be adopted um, by many clinicians, I hope. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that this is a step in the right direction. Um, next steps um, for Evalimab. Well, this is the first really big uh, randomized trial for a survival advantage. There's only been one previous survival advantage study. That's the pembrolizumab second line trial in the setting. So I think it does begin to suggest to us that, you know, the Valimab is an, is an active drug in this setting. And, and I think that some of the debate about 
pembrolizumab being stronger than tezolizumab and, and duvalium. I think that what we're seeing is all of these checkpoint inhibitors are active in the disease. Um, of course, there was the positive of um, a tezolizumab 130 study with progression-free but not overall survival. So it shows that the urothelial cancer space, it may be more important where we test the drug and how we test them with, without, with or without biomarkers, for example, than the type of immune checkpoint inhibitor that we use.